And we're live. Good well, evening, whiskey brothers and sisters. And welcome to episode 14 of the Canadian Whiskey Journeys Whiskey Review. I'm Dolph. I'll be your host tonight. And I'm joined by Blair Phillips and Devin Dekel Jamu, co-authors to this book right here. The definitive guide to Canadian distilleries, the portable expert to over 200 distilleries and the spirits they make. And if you haven't bought it, you should. And if you already have bought it, buy another one for Father's Day coming up very soon. I think that'd be a great idea. I, you, we? I think it's great. Uh, we're continuing our Canadian whiskey journey with a review of Pike Creek's 15-year-old Cab So Finish. Do either of you gentlemen actually have the bottle? I've got a picture, but there we go. I've got one. Perfect. I got us. I got us a, a review bottle in the mail, and we got a bottle in the Canadian Whiskey Awards. But after I got my review bottle, I went out and bought a bottle, and this one still hasn't been cracked open yet. Believe me, this stuff is well worth having. Excellent. And we'll tell you about the price and everything in a bit. Uh, here's let's let's throw some articles up here. Let's let's show the articles. Here's where you're going to get the article. So, CanadianDistillers.com, and here's the article itself right there. And uh, let's get that off. And I guess I'm even going to throw a quote up. I haven't done that for a very long time with you, gentlemen. Here's a I quote. And, and here's the quote. It says, the Niagara region makes great quality wines and Canada makes great quality whiskeys. Why not bring each expression together? We make award-winning products in Canada and we should be proud of them. And the Pike Creek 15-year represents Canada at its best. And that's a quote from Dr. Don. And... Uh, I'm going to use that to get into a question straight to you, Blair. Do you think, or can you think, of very many other whiskey wine collabs in Canada? Because I think Don's got a point. I think we really should be partnering up with other distilleries and breweries, everything within the field. Can you think of very many? <laughs> yeah, the, the one that, that I can think of off the top of my head is uh, Gretzky has started with theirs. That was yeah. a wise, uh, was a, a whiskey that was finished in... Uh, in their wine barrels and they did a nice cask uh an ice whiskey uh not ice whiskey sorry nice wine cast finished whiskey yeah. uh glenora did a nice wine finished whiskey um they're they're out there uh and i i have a real i really like wine okay. finished whiskeys um i've really grown accustomed to them and uh yeah it's 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 a thing it's not a big thing but they're out there i'm yeah, hoping there's more Oh, Bareface, that's another good one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I do have uh, the one that you said from Glenn Breton. That's an ice wine uh, finish as well. But yeah. Wayne Gretzky, it's a, that's a little bit self-serving. And it, it's it's smart because they're making wine, they're making whiskey. Why not go back and forth and do it? Now? But it, it's an itty-bitty little bottle. And my wife likes it a lot, but I've hidden it from her. But she <laughs> obviously knows where it is because she just passed me the bottle. So, yeah, oh, she likes yeah. it. But it's, uh, yeah, it's good looking. Well, it's cute. So uh, my second one, though, let's go from that. And let's show a couple bottles that we have. Let's get the quote off and show the bottles. Uh, this is the type of bottle that they would have gotten their Cab Sauve barrel from. Now, I don't know if it was this wine particularly, but I just wanted to show it. And the type of wine and the price point that they go for. Uh, but they also have their reciprocal agreement with them they actually got barrels from pike creek or wisers and i'm not sure which one actually and uh blair i'll leave that up to you or davin someone tell me if did they get specifically or which type of specific pike creek barrels did they get or if they weren't pike creek were they wisers let's go that either well, of you I know i i kind of have a good idea of what they did this so when um Corby bought the Foreign Affair Winery. Uh, they came to Windsor, their blending team, the wine blending team, and they went on one of uh, Dr. Don's uh, blending clinics. And I think they were quite taken with it. Um, and that's when the, they, they started to think like, hey, we haven't aged whiskey with, in wine barrels. And they said, we haven't aged wine in whiskey barrels. So I don't think they're specifically, um, in this case, like a Pike Creek whiskey, I think. Okay. It would have been whatever I, I assumed. I would, if, if I'm right, uh, any any whiskey barrels that were available at the time that were sent back to the Foreign Affair Winery, and then uh, about a year later, that's when uh, Dr. Don got um, some wine casts, some Cabernet Sauvignon wine casts, and I don't think the two intersect necessarily, uh, but um, the, the, I think that was the, the 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 main story behind it. Okay. 
Yeah, I don't uh, I don't recall the details, but I would bet that they weren't just random casks that they sent down to the mm -hmm. winery. They would have been no. They, they've got just wonderful wood at uh, at Hiram Walker. Yeah, and, and I think the same goes with the wine cast that went back to Weiser's. I, I'm pretty sure there was some careful thought put into it because uh, Dr. Don wanted to find a, a whiskey stock that was very bright that would stand up to the wine so that it would all blend into this nice cohesive unit instead of uh, one mm -hmm. throwing one off. The other. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Have you yeah, tried the wine, uh, the wine, Blair? Have you tried the wine? No, I haven't. No, because th th honestly, I think the, this is just spectacular whiskey. As I yeah. say, I went and bought a bottle. And, I, and I'm pretty sure that uh, when a big corporation like Corby goes and buys Old Niagara Winery, they do it because it's it's going to be damn forward. good wine. Yeah. 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 I can go with that. Yeah. Uh, Devin, I'll throw the next question at you. It's oh. a rainy day here, and, and this whiskey suits my mood and the weather perfectly. Now, I know that you have to stay as impartial as possible when you have your writer's hat on or your judge's hat on, but I'm wondering, and, and Blair, same thing for you after, actually. Uh, do you associate whiskeys with seasons and moods, or do you have to fight to not feel a certain way with a certain whiskey and, and judge it just on that basis? I'm wondering. I, I, I would say no, and then I would give you examples of yes. Because you know, think of, it, think of something. Th think of something like Lagavulin and Sixteen, which is a, a great whiskey in the winter time. Yeah. But uh, you know, it, it really is. But then think of something. You know, like like Weiser's Deluxe. You can't ask for a more enjoyable whiskey to drink on the on the deck. You know, with ice. Okay. You no, know, like things like that. So you know what? I think I don't know myself well enough. Yeah, I, I do. Uh, this whiskey, <laughs> this is a this is a good solid whiskey, though. I mean, you could drink this any season of the year. I mean, maybe if you drink it in the fall and the winter, but I know I like a whiskey that's fairly robust like this. It has the comp such complex flavors, you know, and it goes from fruit, but not necessarily wine fruit. There's lots of wine in there, obviously, but it's got you know those those like those those sharp. Things like like uh, like apricots, you know, like like yeah, you know, uh, yeah. Or, or more like peat, the the juice you get in a can of peaches and things like that. Okay, and it goes through through the grapes right. and things like that. So so this is a very versatile whiskey. So no, I, I'd say I drink this. Uh, I drink it four months yeah. of the area. Okay. Well, let's delve into this, what I call a rainy day dram for myself anyways, John. Uh, uh, so what do you get on the nose, Blair? Well, to me, it's about the spiced, uh, like exotic wood. Um, there's a bit of brown sugar. Those fruits that Davin talked about where you can't really nail down what kind of orchard fruit it is. It just keeps uh, going and going. Um, I do get lots of dark fruits like uh, like the cherry note more than the apricot note but uh it's it's pretty tight yeah the palate is all cherries you're right yeah Devin and i had this conversation before i'm going to throw him a quote people can read that as i'm talking but uh, in your article and i had a hard time because i my tasting notes didn't diverge very much from your article and i don't like that i like thinking that my tasting notes or my palate's not as influenced by what I read, but I think it really was today, except for the cherry part, because I, I can't associate a, a fresh, ripe cherry. I don't have access to that here in Alberta. And maybe at the farmer's market different times in the summers, I'm just not a cherry fan. So I don't get the cherry notes that you say in the article that Dr. Don refers to. I, I'm, I'm just missing out, and I feel like there's so much there that I wish I could go see, so... Uh, you got to come down to try some Niagara cherries, and that will that will oh, yeah. connect the dots for sure. I okay. think what's going to happen is you're going to taste the cherries, and you're going to say, "Pike Creek." That tastes like. <laughs> you know what cherries taste like? They taste, like, taste like Pike Creek like Cab Sauv. <laughs> you know. That's, that's, <laughs> and I'll give some like, to my grandchildren when I have some. This is what a real cherry tastes like as they're here in Edmonton. I'm yeah. kidding. <laughs> my wife saying, "No, you will not. We'll never have them." Up. Uh, as you delve into the palate, I'm just going to throw a little bit of information. 750 mils, 42%, finishing. It's a Niagara region uh, vineyard, So, and it's called Foreign Affair. 
Uh, they're in the cast for 200 days. Dom wanted it 200 days. He could have went longer if he wanted to or shorty, any, but he chose 200. Uh, 2058 bottles created exclusive to Ontario. 70 bucks, 69.95. Get it at LCBO or uh, access their online store for shipping options. On the pallet, gentlemen. And I can go with the ripe fruits on the pallet right away. Mm -hmm. That tastes like cherries, doesn't it, though? Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah right. no. <laughs> remember, um, that, remember that flavor, because when you're in the Okanagan... You'll uh, get some ripe cherries, and by golly, you're gonna you know what they taste like. And I'll have to get over ripened fruit just to tell, just because I think the way we get them here, it's they're they're not ripe, and, and it's not the same. Thing. You can get really black cherries. You get them, and when you touch them, you get you know purple on your thumb because they they're so they're so ripe they break. That I would taste, like that. That tastes really good. Yeah, I think Don was saying Bing cherries is what he got. Because you in that uh, in the cherry, is it called an orchard? Cherry orchard? Cherry orchard, yeah. yeah. Okay. So we worked there, so that, that kind of makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. A connection to childhood. Brown yeah. sugar, you said? Mm -hmm. On the nose, I got it, but on the palate, it uh, goes in like kind of a dark honey for me. Okay. There's a sweetness <laughs> that's... Um, but there's some underlying notes. like a burnt sugar, but a, a, a dark honey works for me. That works. Yeah. Uh, I get a little bit of tobacco on that. Yep. And I have to say, I uh, I worked in tobacco one summer. I was a kill hanger. That'd be fun. Oh, it was fun, yeah. I got it was, I got the job really easily because the guy before me slipped and fell and he didn't get he didn't wake up. So oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're in the top of the barn running back and forth carrying sticks of tobacco. <laughs> okay. Uh, poor guy. <laughs> but good for you, I guess. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. That's good. So uh yeah, the dark fruit I'm going with, but orchard fruit, very, very ripened orchard fruit. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it's a a dark sugar, a toasted sugar, a burnt sugar. Your what you said with the honey, a dark honey works well, and the finish is neat, and it's not one dimensional either. I like that. So. No, I find the finish really dries off with some of those oak tannins, but at the same time, it maintains its structure that you got through the nose and the and the palate, so it doesn't fall apart. It just introduces more and then glides off. The tannins, I think, provide some of that structure because you're right. Mm. It's like everything is kind of it's hung on a frame or something. I don't know. Yeah, oak frames and tannins, but the, yeah. And you know that note that you got, Larry. You said exotic spices or incense or something like that, or sandalwood, yeah. or something like that. I'm still getting that in the finish. Well, I get wood. I don't know the difference between sandalwood and oak really so i'm just gonna stick with wood but for me it's sweet to wood to spice and it comes back to sweet at the end and yet you do have the tannic parts in the in the side for me so the, the only reason why i, I know i like it yeah the reason why i know the smell and taste of or the essence of sandalwood is because my grandparents had a lot of sandalwood when they visited the middle east they brought oh. back tons of it so okay. oh. as a kid i'd be surrounded by this sandalwood and this stuff all the time yeah, yeah. Okay. so it's always and I don't want to say it smells like your grandparents apartment because that sounds really creepy and weird so when you say exotic <laughs> spices it kind of makes sense no it does and my childhood I was surrounded by oak in my grandparents house it was not air conditioned in the summer it was warm there in Montreal so yeah. uh warm and you you get the smell of the oak and you know what that's like when you're surrounded by it so you in that case I think the same thing just at your grandparents house it's sweltering hot the smells are wafting through the house. I don't think it'd be too easy to forget. So that's cool. <laughs> Gentlemen, I think if you find this uh, for $70, you should get another bottle and send one down. Or maybe Dr. Don, if he's listening, can actually open it up and not just give it to the LCBO. I know that's that's our Alberta stance usually. <laughs> Stop giving everything to your the LCBO. But yeah, I like it. And I, I want another one. So I'll track one down. I got some on it. Ontario friends out there. So I definitely will get another one. Uh, any last words, gentlemen, before we sign off? Great whiskey. Pike Creek's always good. And this one is uh, particularly so. 
Yeah, it's I think we've said it all. All right, done. So I guess it's cheers, gentlemen, and we're going to see each other next Tuesday. Have a fantastic week, everybody, and thanks for joining. Have a fantastic day.